Well, I joined my, uh, at 17. I joined in St. Louis at uh, Jefferson Barracks in Missouri, and they shipped me off right away. I did my basic training in the Philippines with, with the 59th Coast Artillery on Cregador. And, and they're a, they, they didn't do the regular training like we do if you trained here before you went. They shipped us out with, uh, over to the Manila and then to Cregador, and then we did our basic training there for uh, two months doing all kind of different things to get us trained. I was uh, 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 loading ammunition for the big 12-inch disappearing guns, and uh, our guns on Cregidor faced the seas, but we, we didn't get to shoot once at them because the Japanese didn't come in that close. They, they knew all about how far the, our guns would get them, so they went around about 60 miles up the coast and landed that way and come in the back door. So we were no use to because all our big 12 inch disappearing gun was facing the ocean toward where the ships would ever go into Manila. And, uh, but they never did come in. They came once and, and we fired and they went around and landed about 60 miles up the coast. Came in the back door then. Uh, we, we were on Cregador for a while and then all of a sudden uh, they moved us off to Cregador and they shipped us to, uh, after, we, after we surrendered, you know, they shipped us to Cabana. Uh, Tuan prison camp and we uh, we was there for about oh I guess three months and then they shipped me to Japan to Nagoya Japan working in a, a, a factory foundry building uh, stuff melting copper and stuff and I was there for four years in the city of Nagoya. Well I was in uh, about three or four prison camps first was the ones in uh, Bilibid prison in Manila they shipped us, that was temporary till they, till they shipped us out to Capanatuan, uh, the prison camp. And I stayed there at this prison, it was a big prison camp, like a big farm, like and about 60 miles out of Manila. And uh, then they uh, sent, needed some 300 of us, to, they shipped us to Japan to work at this factory, this copper factory, melting copper, and that's, it. that's when they shipped us by boat to Nagoya, Japan. And I stayed there until the war was over. Uh, because I know I was glad to get home and after being over there for so long as a prisoner for four years, you know. So, and then we had a lot of people die from just different things. And most of the people that were hurt were married men. Um, and I'm glad I was only 17 and didn't have a wife or anything because most of the prisoners who were uh, married they thought of their wives and really got them down. And then the Japanese picked on the guys, saying different dirty things that their wives were out shacking up with guys and all, just to break his morale down and stuff like that. But I was a single 17, didn't know any better. And I uh, was, I, 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 I kind of told a lot of different stories, made them different. They, they know, see the Japanese knew three people where I went, they, they knew, they knew Clark Gable, Shirley Temple, and Al Capone, and then they say, where are you from? I actually was from St. Louis, Missouri, but I said I was from Chicago, and then they said, Chicago? And then they say, do you, do you know Al Capone, the, the big gangster? I said, yeah, I'm number Nibon, and that wasn't, <laughs> but that, that true, because they, they broadcast the other guard, him number two, Al Capone, Chicago, you know, so they leave me alone. And it was just a big lie that I was made up, and, and, and it worked. So I, I was glad of that. Oh, well, I had a lot of friends that died in, in the prison camp, and some were, four of them were shot when they first uh, they escaped from Cabana to Juan, and in about two weeks, they, the Japanese caught the, the prisoners in, the, in Manila in the Philippines, and they brought them back to the camp, and then they, li they lined it, all 200 of us on a line, and watch, uh, watch the Japanese line the, f the four guys up, and they shot them in front of us. To, that was to tell us this is what we do to escape prisoners if caught, you know. And so, so that was that was one of the worst things. Uh, and then when they buried them, they had to dig their own grave, and it was only about s that deep. And they fell in, and some of them didn't. Uh, a couple of them didn't die right. And one guy tried to crawl up, and we could see his hand. And we, they had us line up to see this killing and shooting. So we had asked the Japanese, would they give him a mercy shop because he's dying and coming up with his hand, you know? And they didn't do that.
We didn't get much food. We used to get, where I was at the prison camp, we used to get a rice ball, a ball of, uh, ball of rice that about that big and a salty cherry in the, in the thing. And that was our, our meal. And, and it was only once, once a day we got that. And so we were really hungry because I weighed about 55 pounds when they f recaptured me a couple of years ago or later. And it had to be built up just for malnutrition.